Hello and welcome to Clay Pigeon in Dorchester for the next instalment of action from round five of the 2022 Ultimate Karting Championship. In this program, we'll be bringing you all of the super final action for Micromax, Minimax and Honda Cadet. And while these drivers may be some of the youngest here, they already have all of the grit and determination that they're going to need. So let's get straight to it then. The first of three super finals that we're bringing you in this program is the Sodi Micromax class. Let's find out how they've all qualified and who's sitting where with your race commentators, Jake and Alan. Well, James Roberts has won everything so far this weekend. He's on pole position with Daniel Minto alongside Jack Baker and Olivia Reynolds on the second row, Oliver Warner and Katie Donaldson on row three. From JJ Lowe and Christian Stefanov, then Jaden Sherwood and Jake Graffiti rounding out the top ten with Sam Ladie alongside Riley Morgan and Alex Jones, the privateer. So the Micromax boys and girls are going to have a bit of a battle. Looks like we've got a bit of an interesting start here. Three wide into turn one. That's not quite as it's supposed to be. And into the lead straight away. A fantastic charge forward from Dan Minto, but I have a feeling that there's going to be one or two drivers not too happy with the way Minto did that. So that's an interesting start. He's got the lead. James Roberts, their championship leader, in second. Like you say, Jake, he's won everything, all the heats and the super heat prior to this final. So he knows he's got a whole bag of points. He doesn't need to win this final. Will he want to? Of course he will. It's on TV. Oh, run wide there in the middle of the pack, just about saving it. That was the 48 going wide. JJ Lowe just about saved it on the way out of the hairpin up towards Buttons. That was close, almost threw the entire race away, early doors. But good recovery there from JJ Lowe. Roberts all over the back of Minto as we go into the second lap. Is he going to find the inside? No, he's not. Dan Minto holding that line beautifully. Yeah, as I was saying, James Roberts will know that he doesn't have to win this, but he will want to, as I say, up the inside for the lead. He'll want to because it's on TV. He wants to have these memories to look back on. Here comes Olivia Reynolds battling. Trying to get through on the inside of Warner. And, and Warner's, Warner's gone off. Oh, Warner has gone off and onto the grass. You can't hold that in a straight line with all the rain that's Ooh. come down prior. Oliver Warner was very lucky indeed there. Yeah, he's lucky not to be collected by somebody as he came back onto the track. And look, he just got off onto the marbles. You've got no traction there at all on the greasy conditions. He's trying to keep it in a straight line, yeah. but on the grass, you've got nothing. Yeah, and then it goes round and then just backs onto the track. Cart's just missing. He's lucky not to be collected. So Oliver Warner who uh, has been performing really well in this championship in the last few rounds, but he's got it all to do from the back of the grid now. JJ Lowe sets the fastest lap. JJ, we know quite well from Hooton Park, Jake. Yes, indeed, but look at this situation they've got here at Clay Pigeon. You can see that there's patches of water all around the circuit, and there's only really one dry line, so the drivers will want to use that. You can see they're all on slick tyres, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you can, so. see, you can see the dry line, but you can see just offline. You can see where all the wet patches are, obviously. Daniel Minto now sets the fastest lap. And he tricky. still has the lead Look with this. James Roberts there in second place. The minimal amount of uh, mistake is required to get this wrong. It's so tricky for the drivers out there. They're on slicks. Now Warner, who was off on the grass, now he's set the fastest lap. So Warner is on the... The march back. Well, Sherwood's got into fourth place past Christian Stefanov, so that's a good bit of a battling there. And JJ Lowe has got himself back into seventh place on the back of Jack Baker on the previous lap. Now trying to work his way forward. Roberts climbing all over Dan Minto. Doesn't want to push too hard too soon. But there is a big battle developing. Now, for those of you that are watching the W Series in what are we now, 22, let's say 2032, We've got two of the drivers in the W Series <laughs> in this one, Olivia Reynolds and Katie Donaldson. Now, Donaldson oh. is showing as right at the back of the grid. She's had a problem. Now, Donaldson was leading the race at Rara before it started raining, 
and there Ron Snicks and she threw it off unfortunately yeah. and in this one we've got Olivia Reynolds who we also know is very quick both of those drivers will be in the W Series in 2032 you mark my words they'll be racing each other well, I can tell you unfortunately that Donaldson is out of the race she didn't manage to get round the first lap nor did Riley Morgan so we just have the 11 remaining but this battle for the victory between Dan Minto and James Roberts really has turned up the dial already Roberts got past Minto on this corner on the previous lap and then Minto got him straight back again so Roberts trying his best to get through on Dan Minto but as they battle look who's waiting in the wings Olivia Reynolds is there for the taking I'll tell you what she's fancying the job here she's getting closer to them and the closer she gets she'll know I've got the pace here and if I can get there I'm going to go past because the one thing we know that Olivia Reynolds can do is overtake well she's doing exactly what she needs to do here just sit behind them watch what they do pick up a couple of the nuances of the braking zones and the apex uh, position they're going for just watch as they back away with each other and then wait for the opportunity it's going to open up just organically so she can just sit there in position and take her moment Oliver Warner at the back of the field charging his way back about 11 seconds off the lead but still pumping in some very decent lap times to try and get that gap down so Minto holding Roberts Reynolds there in third then Sherwood low stepping off in the background just trying to shake off Baker and Ludiyi and then Jake Gruffati in the seven in front of Alex Jones JJ Lowe has actually moved his way up to fifth position on that lap so JJ Lowe now trying to close in on Sherwood from the drone we can see once again on the run to Hans Hairpin Roberts is going to go the long way round Minto's going to cover the inside Roberts will try and get the switcheroo and they're going to be side by side this is going to be the move from James Roberts but Minto straight back again that's what happened a few laps ago Roberts had a look on the inside Minto was there on retaliation you can see the damp patch all the way around the outside of the horseshoe can't you the guys do not want to get out there and here comes Olivia Reynolds look at this third place getting closer now this is going to be very interesting as the laps count down that's James Roberts championship leader picked out Looking oh Minto's going to go wide oh it's a great move into the S's yeah that's a solid move so Roberts back into the lead uh, Dan Minto uh, is in second oh he's going oh, again oh. dives in and Roberts has got a holding line and they both run wide Reynolds is going to get them both Olivia Reynolds puts a just the front fairing out in the lead for a brief moment and then runs wide onto the grass what a save from Olivia Reynolds she could easily have gone the same way as Oliver Warner let's look at it again she dives through on the inside as the other two leaders run out wide she should have just slightly got it a very unhappy James Roberts not happy at all with Minto slicing it up the inside Minto gets back to the inside and look just a slight run out there from Reynolds the back end gets onto the wet patch she was so quick to get herself back into position again that could easily have been a spin so well recovered there by Reynolds and here we go again look at this look at this this is uh, two laps later and she's already back on them yeah this Incredible. is amazing she was she dropped miles behind and now she's right on them and if she didn't know before I've got the pace to win this race she certainly does now and now she's irritated because Minto forced her onto the damp patch a couple of laps ago so now she's got the red mist so she's going to be charging after James Roberts it's Minto Roberts and Reynolds Reynolds bangs in a 38-8 for the lap so she is really pushing here comes the move again from Roberts they're going to nearly bang wheels as Minto just moves to cover the line in time for the chicane and as they come up to Hans Hairpin once more it's going to be about where Reynolds can pitch the cart in up through Hans through the right hander no big moves yet maybe into the horseshoe here comes Roberts on the inside dives in for Minto Minto holds it around the outside Reynolds is still there very close between these three. Who's going to make the big move? She was flirting with the wet patch there on the outside of the track, but uh, got away with it. But uh, this is anybody's. Any one of these three can win this. And uh, who knows, with the, the way the circuit's sitting, with the amount of damp around the edge of the track, you never know. These three might go flying off. I was just going to say... Might be Jaden Sherwood yeah. looking to pick up the pieces. If either. you're Sherwood or low, you are not backing off the challenge at all in fourth and fifth because anything could happen to these three up front. Here we go, Minto defends. Roberts tries to get the switchback manoeuvre out of hands, up to the horseshoe, dives in for the inside, decides to cut in round the outside, hopes the door opens up. It does. Minto still covers the inside for buttons, but now they're going to set up a move into the final bend. That was well worked by Roberts, but Minto holds it around the outside and now Reynolds is going to try and get alongside Roberts she can't make that move now Roberts tucks it for the inside oh gets squeezed and Reynolds is through in a second Roberts hand in the air again 
He will not be happy with that, James Roberts. He won't be happy at all. But Olivia Reynolds is very happy, thank you very much, as Warner again sets apart his lap further back in the field. Here comes Roberts up the inside of Reynolds and gets through to second place once more. Yeah, dives in. Nice clean move from James Roberts, but he's obviously got a little bit of work to get past Minto, and he's clearly had three or four opportunities to get past Minto, who is not cooperating in the slightest. With every chance James Roberts tries to get through on the inside, he's found the door, he's firmly slammed in his face. As they come onto the main straight again, two to go, uh, three to go actually. Look at the battle for four, fifth and six here. Great yeah. battle. JJ yeah, Lowe's in fourth now from Jack Baker and Jaden Sherwood yeah, down to six. Sherwood has dropped to P6, you're right. And Sam Ladii and Christian Stefanov are closing up as well. So there could be all sorts of badinage in that top five. That looked like Jack Baker. Was that Jack Baker going through for fourth place? I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely right. The 71 there is in P4 for the moment. JJ Lowe still there in P5. Oh, trying his best to get back on the inside line through the horseshoe. Not going to happen. Two terrific battles, one for the lead and one for P4 as Reynolds again tries to get a decent run off the turn. So that is uh, Baker coming towards us indeed in fourth place ahead of Lowe and Sherwood. Oh, Minto runs very deep. This time he's surely going to have the lead back. James Roberts cuts back in, read the situation there beautifully, and Reynolds has still got momentum. Minto tapping his helmet to try and help. I'm going to go for the lead, though. Dives in at hands. Too long, too fast, and that's enough for Roberts to pick up the lead again. Minto tries again. Banks wheels! They're both going to run out wide. Minto savages the move on Roberts. Reynolds threw in a second, and I'm sure James Roberts is going to be livid. Final bend, and we're going to go into the final lap, and Olivia Reynolds has a real chance to go for the victory here with Dan Minto in front. James Roberts down in third position has just got to hope that something happens. Last lap, here we go. Reynolds is going to try and take the lead. Here she comes, and she hits the front. Olivia Reynolds leads on the final lap. Now, can Dan Minto retaliate? There was a little feather on the throttle, and that could be enough for Minto to dive on the inside. He does. Misses his breaking point, though. Reynolds comes back in front, but the door is still open. Minto's going to come back through on the hairpin, and they're both going to run wide. Roberts is going to steal it. James Roberts will steal the victory. Minto spins on the grass. He's lost it all. Reynolds is going to come through for B2, but James Roberts will steal the victory back again. He has won a clean sweep of the entire weekend here at Glade Pigeon. An astonishing drive by James Roberts. Lightning strikes twice for poor Olivia Reynolds as she gets a front fairing post race that drops her from P2 to P10. So Jaden Sherwood and JJ Lowe pick up the rostrum. Christian Stefanov ahead of Baker and Ludigi. From Jake Rafferty, Alex Jones and Oliver Warner. Reynolds down to 10th. Dan Minto out. How about that in the Sodi Micromax Super Final? Thank you to all of those young racers there for entertaining us trackside. Looking across to the uh, barriers and the balcony here at Clay Pigeon, all the teams are going absolutely wild. The guys from Hunter, the guys from Argenti, the guys from Sodi, and it went down to that final lap, that final moment over there. Daniel Minto is going to be absolutely heartbroken, but the victors and the people that will be cheering come the end of it. In third place out of nowhere, Jaden Sherwood. And then, of course, Olivia Reynolds looked like she was going to do it. Just couldn't get it done, getting involved in that moment with Minto in the infield. She went off and suddenly the door opened for James Roberts, who was out front in the early stages of the race anyway. He thought it was all over. He crossed the line in first. Happiest man in town but none happier than me here watching track. So well done to all of you. Thanks for a great race. Let's go catch up with them at the podium. James, now you're a serial winner, but at some point on that last lap, you must have thought it was all over. Oh yeah, I mean, we had good points from the weekend to extend our championship lead. We won everything, so I was like, thinking, I don't know, uh, it's not the end of the world if I don't finish P1, but uh, when I saw him, both drift out wide <laughs> and then they went onto the grass. It felt yeah, good. it was absolutely the race of the season. But it's great thinking for somebody of your age. How old are you now? 11. Yeah, it's good It's good thinking that you're thinking the positive on that last lap where I'm not going to win, but, and then all of a sudden it opens up yeah. for you. So who's responsible for that win? Uh, my dad, obviously, getting the cart. It's the cart we handled great. Dad, I, the, the cart just handled great. My mum, obviously, couldn't come this weekend, but... She really helped. Bradley, Mark, Ryan, Jax, Alex and Tony, and Mark and Mark and Emma all at Sodi. So yeah. Okay, well done. Thank you.
Jane, your eyes are stinging a bit there from the champagne, but uh, great to get some champagne because on that last lap, it didn't look like you were going to finish in the top three at one point, did it? It was such a close last lap. No one could have ever wrote that down. No, you're right. It was a fantastic race to uh, finish this penultimate round of the season. Who do you want to thank, other than your driving skills? Who's responsible? So, Harwoods, I would like to thank Hydrate Mate as well. Honey, my sister over there, uh, my family and Ambition Motorsport. OK, well done. Thank you. I've been following you from your time at Hooton Park. You race at Hooton yeah. Park, obviously, in the club meetings there. Yeah. And to come all the way down here to Dorchester, yeah. to Clay Pigeon, long way to come, yeah. but you're going home with a trophy. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's not just your driving skills. Who's the other people that have helped you get that? Um, my sponsors, MKM, Hannon Holmes, um, HSS, and my dad's work, and... Um, more and when um when my, du my when my dad does spannering I my dad just tells me to go to um the coach called Connor and he's really helped me a crushing victory for James Roberts takes him one step closer to sealing the title next time at Three Sisters. Dan Minto will still throw everything at it. Jaden Sherwood, Katie Donaldson and Christian Stefanoff in the hunt for third position. But spare a thought for Olivia Reynolds. Two second places washed away from front fairing penalties. With the points lost, she could easily have been in the top five. Let's see what happens next time. Well, fantastic racing from those Sodi Academy Micromax youngsters there. Next out on track, then, it's the turn of Minimax. And one team that will be focusing on the new 950 chassis that's coming as part of the rule changes in 2023 are Ambition Motorsport, headed up by Paul Jaynes, who I caught up with on the grid earlier today. Paul, here we are at the penultimate round of the UKC Championship, nearing the end of 2022. When we get into 2023, there are changes coming and uh, you're right across all of it, especially as far as this 950 mil chassis is concerned. Yes, we are. Um, so basically, there is going to be a, a new introductory class coming in, which is called Micromax. Obviously, it's in at the moment in the UKC Championship yeah. under the Sodi Academy. Um, but I think Paul at UKC and the team are putting it in together for their, uh, obviously their series yeah. and uh, use it as an open chassis class now. So. Yeah. Uh, we're bringing the Paralin brand into the UK and uh, very successful abroad and then obviously winning lots at the international scene and it's about time it won over here. Yeah, I'm sure it will. And you've got one on display in your awning this weekend. But just tell us about that chassis. 950 millimetres and it's all about the wheelbase. Yes, exactly. So the current car at the moment is 900 mil in the cadet class. Yeah. Um, obviously in Europe they've been using a 950 for years. So. Um, uh, Motorsport UK and obviously the IKR racing scene are all get, are coming together to make sure the category is recognised across the board and um, it, it's more to help more of the uh, younger drivers who are quite tall. Yeah. Obviously um, there are small drivers but um, we, there is a more adjustment on the pedal kit now on a 950 car to accommodate that smaller driver. And also going into the interclass, yeah. which is obviously replacing Minimax, right. um, you can now get a, a small cadet driver trend, who's going to transition into the interclass, Minimax, into a cart which is actually suitable for their needs. Yeah. So in, in, really also good value as money for parents. You know, a cart that's with them in their younger years, and they'll, they'll carry that through for quite a while. Yeah, exactly. So you can have the car all the way from uh, eight years old all the way through to 13, 14. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're not going to keep a car for that long. It will obviously wear and tear, and uh, you have to upgrade. But that driver is in the same cart, near enough on the same tyre, yeah. for the duration of five to, to six years. And from a development point of view, aside from a cost point of view, that's got to be great for them. They're learning their trade. Yeah, for sure. So if you was uh, to put your son or daughter into karting at eight years old, all the components in Micromax will be um, to hand all the way through your uh, racing career in karting. So you can actually use all the same components from the Rotex brand all the way to senior Rotex, just changing the engine to update it for the class regulations. And this is what Ambition Motorsport, you guys focus on. I understand, you know, back in the day it was all about Honda cadets, but now you know, spreading across the road tax as well, but the focus still on the next generation. Yeah, for sure. So we're still doing the Honda. It's ideal for newcomers into the sport. 
Um, they're going on to the 950 chassis as well. Um, you can still use your 900s at club level, which is fantastic. So all the old stuff from this year, you can still be competitive uh, in 2023. Um, we're still going to concentrate on the Honda and uh, category and also the Micromax and Interclass. So right. we've got three categories that we're going to focus on in 2023 in the UKC Championship. And it's good to return back to the series after a brief uh, spell away from it last year. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're pleased to have you back and you got a full complement of the drivers this weekend. How's everyone getting on and what are some of the things that you're telling them about Clay Pigeon? So we're doing OK this weekend. We come into this championship leading Honda Gadet. Uh, we won the championship two years ago with Blake Tyshurst. Yeah. And uh, we want to repeat that uh, championship again this year with a new driver, Kenzo Craigie, who has actually been with he's... us for about three years now. Yeah, and he's doing really well, yeah. eh? No, he, he uh, was on dominant form last round. Clean, clean sweep of wins at the last round, wasn't it, yep. for him? Yeah, for sure. But I don't see the uh, the necessity of having a big team. I keep it to a small team where yeah. the driver gets the maximum attention they deserve. And the good thing is as well, casting your mind back to when you were racing, not that many years ago that you finished, and you know this circuit well. You've been wheel to wheel with some of the great names. Yeah, so for sure. Um, obviously, I started in '98 yeah. um, when nose cones literally came into the sport. So, Kyle uh, has come a long way. But this circuit's great. The team here are really good. The circuit hasn't actually changed at no, all. No. It's always been the same. But obviously, the racing's really close. And the and the way to win round here is not being the fastest, just being the consistent. Yeah. And uh, if you're consistent round here, you're always in a hunt for the win. You've really got to learn to carry your speed and manage your line because you could easily on some of these corners scrub off speed and then it's your lap over. Yeah, for sure. It's the shortest distance around the circuit wins the race. So effectively, you have got certain lines you can take around here. Unfortunately, you come off the racing line, the, the marbles on the outside, yeah. it just makes the cart slide. So you've got to be so precise every single lap. Brilliant stuff. Paul, thanks ever so much for talking no to us. No worries, thank Good you. Good luck for the weekend. Cheers. And uh, let's see what that chassis and the changes are all about for next year. Yeah, no, watch this space. Thank you. Noah Wolf on pole position for the Minimax alongside Harrison Whittakam, then Josh Graham and Sebastian Mins from Jack West and Thomas Min Spearing, Alex Zingarevich and Finn Buck from Liam Hartley and Jack Thompson. Outside the top 10, it's Harry Bartle alongside Finn Leslie, then Jasmine Taylor lines up 13th alongside Michael Walker, Lizzie Mentia and Lewis Goff, and then it's Mike Dalton, Tyler Lee, Dan Kilpatrick and Addison Smith. Zane Quaker and Harry Cottrell, Elliot Powell and Charlie Vary, from Dan Hartley and Gabriel O'Cullen, then Hitkins, Turner, Reed and Carney, from Oliver Grundy and Emily Cotty, from Toby Gale, Albert Wilton and Jensen Pritchard. Here we go, and off to start as orders. Up to the first corner, Noah Wolf trying to hold the lead nicely. From the first corner, Joshua Graham getting into second place nicely. Up and over, bit of a problem for Jasmine Taylor as she's gone up, and there's more joining the scene as the rain is coming down at the worst possible moment. They're all on slicks, and it's lap one rain. It's Nürburgring. 2007 all over again as we battle on board with Harrison Whittakam watching the treble seven of Sebastian Mins trying to tiptoe his way through on the opening lap here at Clay Pigeon and now the drivers have got to cope with the conditions here in the drizzle on slick tyres for the remainder of this race it's going to be really tricky from here on out as Spearing gets a little bit skew with there behind Mins that got very close for comfort one driver further back wouldn't have expected to be starting P12 was Finn Leslie championship contender so he's got it all to do from P12 and with Noah Wolf uh, out front currently and some Seb Mins here he is on the 777 making up a place uh, they're also the main championship contenders. Wolf, the championship leader, of course, will be now after this weekend. Um, it's all to play for in this class, no doubt about it. But Finn Leslie got it all to do from P12. And Whittakem's struggling to hold on to that original third position. Now Spearing coming through to get his overtaking move. This is all in the battle in the top six. Spearing's going to lose it on the exit. And now there's going to be a real challenge as they come through. Josh Graham has actually hit the front by the look of it. We're still dealing with West, and that's Mins and Wolf sliding around. Everybody's really struggling for traction. Oh, and up in the air, Spearing goes airborne slightly. Goodness me. Slick tyres, wet track. This is really difficult indeed here at Clay Pigeon as drivers are just jockeying their way through, trying to hold on to their position and try and gain as much as they can in very greasy conditions indeed. As we close up on the 31 of Finley Buck, trying to make the overtake. This is really greasy now. And obviously with the rain starting to come down on a circuit that is bone dry on slick tyres, these guys are really going to find it tricky out there. Good battles already starting to shape up as we've got 
Lewis Goff dueling away with Zane Quaker coming off the turn. Josh Graham, though, now that he's in the lead, starting to pull away. Sets the fastest lap, Josh Graham, Harry Bartle down the inside of the 31. That's Finley Buck for a spot and takes the spot. Nice, clean move. Yeah, that was really well managed there in the chicane. You can be a little bit braver in these greasy conditions. Michael Walker now bangs in a 38-1. You can see how much time they're losing uh, in the uh, greasy conditions. Normally, they'd be going into the 36s uh, on these uh, conditions. So, obviously, uh, still a little bit of dry patches around the course, but the track has depreciated in speed a little bit. Noah Wolf has managed to get himself back into second place past Sebastian Mins. And Noah Wolf, of course, is the man on form in the Minimax category. He's not won the championship yet, but he's certainly the favourite to do so. Finley Buck on the inside of Bartle gets the move back again. That's one lap later. And look, you can see him ride the kerb and the position of the camera actually jolted. That's how much energy is dissipating every time the cart goes over those curbs. You take an awful lot of punishment on the rib cage as you bounce over those curbs, but it is the fastest way through. Good to see a new name at the top of the time sheets in terms of the fastest lap. Michael Walker sets another fastest lap. Finn and Leslie, by the way, he set the fastest lap before. Noah Wolf has now set the fastest lap. So fastest laps has been set by drivers throughout the field. And uh, Finn Leslie, by the way, Jake, has moved this weekend to Kato Motorsport. Moved teams. He was at SPR, of course. Now with Kato Motorsport. Well, always interesting to see what happens when drivers decide to uh, switch outfits mid-season. Up we go on the inside and gets past Sebastian Mins. That's a nice move from Harrison Whittacombe. He manages to get the overtaking move then. He's been building up to this. I wonder if Tom Spearing is going to come along for the ride a little later on into the race. And Harry Bartle still battling, this time with Finn Leslie. Leslie loses out, and that's going to be opposition and opportunity gained there. Two places by Jack West. So now Whittacombe's going to lose out to Mins just about chops across before he loses out to Finley Buck, who now has the fastest lap of the race. And now Finn Buck has got pressure of his own from that man, Tom Spearing, who is still putting pressure on him as they come up towards Pit Bend. Normally we have one 360-degree camera on. We've got two in this particular race. Harry Bartle and Harrison Whittacombe doing the honours. We're on board now with Harry Bartle through the line, down to Billy's blind. That's Jack West in behind for the Synergy Race team. Looking up the inside. Oh, makes a lovely clean move into the S's. On board now with Harrison Whittacombe. Switching back and forth between onboard cameras. Finley Buck up the inside. Looks like he's lost it on the exit. He has. Taking advantage is Tom Spearing. Spearing managed to get through on the inside as well, so the two Argentis of Whittacombe and Spearing managed to get the upper hand on Finn Buck on that particular occasion. Finn Leslie behind them in seventh place is going to be trying to work his way forward. Now that's Jasmine Taylor in the middle of the field. Obviously, she was one of the drivers caught out on the opening lap, so she's having to get out of the way and let the leaders come through. Still no opportunity there for Buck to get back on the inside of Spearing. Whittacombe's had to bail out a little bit. Buck is on the grass. Here comes Tom Spearing. Thanks very much, buddy. I'll have the place, thank you. Billy Buck set the fastest lap on the last lap. Won't be set the fastest lap this time. Oh, and Noah Wolf's got back ahead of Josh Graham. He's managed to get back into the lead there, Alan. So he obviously dropped back a little bit. But Wolf has managed to systematically work his way back now in front. There he is. He's managed to get through into the lead again in front of Josh Graham. So Wolf out in the lead. He is the championship leader as things stand then on this lap. So Wolf, Graham, Seb Mins. Mins is in the championship hunt as well with Finn Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, though, only down in seventh. So he not, not doing his championship chances. Any favours at the moment, Finn Leslie. Whittacombe and Spearing still having this terrific inter-team battle for fourth position. Whittacombe very nearly bandside on the inside of his teammate, then thought better of it. West gets past Jasmine Taylor, who has to move out of the way. Look at Josh Graham all over the back of Noah Wolf. He's not letting him have a moment's peace. Whittacombe did actually get past Spearing there, and now Graham's gone for the lead on Noah Wolf. Wolf is going to get straight back on the retaliation, though. No cheap overtakes today. Excellent work. That's a great uh, retaliation move, and that's what you want to do as well. Somebody gets past you like that, and you've got the switch back on take advantage of it and get straight back into the lead. You're, you control track position. Yeah, you almost sense when the guy's coming through, so you just think, right, I'm going to get back off the throttle, I'm going to go slow in and fast out, and you get a faster exit from the corner. So you go, oh, and who's that coming into the pits to retire? It's a back marker getting out of the way there, unfortunately. So we definitely lost one of the competitors from the fray, but then we did have two or three drivers on that opening lap in trouble. There's the move, nice one from Finn Leslie. Dives in there on Tom Spearing. And that will do very nicely indeed from his perspective as he continues to make progress through. 
So that's going to put Vin Leslie where? Fifth position now on Tom, uh, Tom Spearing. Battling for the lead. Whoa, Josh Graham changed his line at the last possible moment there to get through on Noah Wolf and takes the lead with less than a minute left on the time screen. Back on the inside, Noah Wolf dives back through. Neither driver is prepared to give way. Wolf repays the compliments in kind. Similar moves on both of them, but fantastic driving by the pair. And look at the Clean defense. As you like. Look at the defensive tactics now from Wolf. He really is trying to back Joshua Graham into the path of Mins Whittacombe and Leslie. He's got a lot of time for that to happen. Now Whittacombe diving in on Mins. Mins will not be pushed around. He holds the inside line, and that's opened up the gap for Finn Leslie. He's going to come through now. So Leslie will try to get through on the grass. Whittacombe tried his best to hold on, but he has to let them go. He's frustrated. Spearing's gone through. Buck's gone through, Jack West has gone through, and Harry Bartle is trying to get through as well. So an absolutely furious Whittacombe, but he tried to hold it round the outside and there was no more road to play with. Now Bartle's going to get by, so is Zingarevich. Zingarevich is going to get them both. He snatches two places on the last lap. That's absolute perfect in terms of timing. But now we've got Noah Wolf trying to back up Josh Graham into Sebastian Mins. He wants to run away and hide. He's trying to hold the line. He gets a little bit of a love tap into the hairpin. Dives through. Wolf won't want to give him the space. He tries to run in on the outside. On the grass. Mins dives through to second. To the lead. Mins is going to steal it out of the final bend. Sebastian Mins will snatch the winner, Clay Pigeon. Magic. Majestic run from Sebastian Mins. He snatches victory from the jaws of defeat. Absolutely masterful. Oh, Graham and Wolf just got too focused on each other. Mins took the bull by the horns, snatched the win from both of them. Cheers, boys. That's a wonderful victory. Frustrations from many others in the field. And Sebastian Mins comes through to take the win away from Noah Wolf. A post-race penalty drops Josh Graham from third to tenth, so Finn Leslie gets the final spot on the rostrum from Buck, Spearing and West. Zingarevich B7 ahead of Bartle and Whittacombe. Well done to Gabriel Cullen. This is not an easy field to make up progress, and he made up 13 places. Well, how about that? I said at the start of this programme that the top step of the podium could only be a race or two away for Sebastian Mins of KR Sport. And hey, presto, he's done it here at Clay Pigeon. A great result for him. All that excitement went down on the final corner. And I don't know what must be going through the minds right now of Noah Wolf and Joshua Graham, because either one of those lads could have uh, taken the win lap after lap prior to that moment. Really exciting stuff. I'm almost lost for words. Let's go and catch up with them at the podium. We had an all right start and then it started kind of raining a bit. So because I'm quite experienced on slicks in the wet, it was quite hard. But then Noah um, had a bit of advantage because he knew when it was wet. And then towards the end, I was getting quite quick. And then Noah and Josh Graham had a battle on the last lap. And then Noah went on the grass and I snicked up the inside. Um, I would like to thank Motorsport Finance, my mechanic, my mum, my dad, my sister, yeah, that's it. Now a penultimate round of the championship. You're looking for a great result. Second good enough for you this weekend? Yeah, it's good enough. We had battles all around the race today. We had good weekend racing, and I think I got more points than my rivals. So, yeah. Who do you want to thank? I would like to thank my dad, my family, uh, my mechanic, Sam, and all my sponsors. Super, well done. Finn, third place today, close yet again in this class. It's really the three of you have been going at it hammer and tongs all season. But third place, good enough for you this weekend. It keeps you in the championship hunt, I guess. Yeah, we're definitely still in the fight for the championship. And especially that we had to start 12th. It was really difficult to try and make my way through the field. But yeah. OK, who do you want to thank? Uh, Kato Motorsport, uh, Raceway Motorsport, my mum and all my family for coming to spot with this weekend. Terrific podium there for Finn Leslie. Noah Wolf though leads the championship and he's one step away from clinching it, but look at that for second. Leslie versus Mins, it could be either of them that gets the runner-up spot. Josh Graham in fourth from Bartle and Spearing with Hartley, Murphy, Buck and Zingarevich wanting to finish off strong at Three Sisters next time out in Minimax. Well, great racing from those young Minimax racers there. And next out on track, it's the turn of Honda Cadets. Leading the championship coming into this one is that man there, Cart 199, Kenzo Craigie, after what was a dominant performance, wasn't it, in Raura last time out. Let's find out how he's qualified and what the rest of them are looking like as we go and join your race commentators, Jake and Alan. 
Well, it's going to be Rocco Shenton and Jarrett Clark on the front row of the grid for the Honda Cadet final. Kenzo Craigie and Kai Clark in front of Noah Barham and Finley Lines. Charlie Warren and Charlie Wolfitt rounding out the top ten. It's Ethan Griffiths and Rio Licata. Then Royotaro Sakai and Charlie King from Oliver Majewski and Ryan White. Then Jaden Mead and Kian Bernard. Bella Fairclough, a tough grid position for her, 17th alongside Sam Mott. Oliver Spencer will want to make progress from 19th. Then Jack Price in front of Thomas Hill. Everybody on wet tyres, a little bit tricky in terms of weather for the start. Nobody's been able to get the slick tyres on ready for the start of this one. So let's see how it all plays out. Here we go. Good start from the pole position for Rocco Shenton. He's going to try and squeeze Jarrett Clark through turn one. Nicely handled as around the outside that looked like Kai Clark trying to make good progress. And now they're going to nick their way through. Clark is up to third position off the start. So a very good launch as the Honda Cadets work their way through the first chicane. Everybody's kept it clean on the opening lap. The rule is still the same. You can't win on lap one, but you can definitely rule. But that's someone spacing in the wrong direction in the middle of the pack there. I think we had a spinner towards the back of the field, unfortunately. But certainly for second place, Rocco Shenton has now lost out. So he is down to second position as Jarrett Clark has hit the front. You can see that there's definitely a distinct dry line. We've got a new race leader. Yep, Shenton. Through pit back in front. Oh, goodness me. All three of them ran wide there. That could have been very nasty indeed. Faster frenetic. Sounds like Honda Cadet to me. This is going to be a race of a test of steely nerves as Finley Lines runs a little bit wide. Up the inside is going to come the 47 of Ryotaro Sakai off the final turn. And they're going to dive into the first corner. It's Shenton from Clark and Clark. Kai ahead of Jarrett. Then Noah Barham and Charlie Wolfe. Look how tight it is up the inside. That's going to be Barham getting through into third place and Clark into the lead. So Kai Clark in the 67 hits the front. That's the third different leader because Jarrett Clark has led. Rocco Shenton has led. And now Kai Clark. Here comes Rocco Shenton back into the lead again. Great battles for the lead. Everybody skating around the circuit trying to find good pace. That's Charlie Warren behind the top five. And Bella Fairclough, goodness me, she's up in about seventh position. She's she started done. way back in the pack. P17, Jake. That is uh, the Japanese driver, Ryoturo Sakai. And uh, he's upper place on Finley Lines. And it's, it's worth mentioning, Jake, as well. If you want to race in UKC from anywhere in the world in 2023, get in touch via the website, www.ukcglobal.com. And the, the uh, championship will accommodate you. You don't need an international license. You just need to prove you have experience in karting. Another change for the lead, Jake. Yes, indeed. That's Noah Barham hitting the front. So that's that, four different race leaders is that now. Bella in six. It is fifth. Bella. No, she's in fifth place. How on Take earth? That fourth. How on earth has she done that? So Bella Fairclub now in fourth position. Make that third. She's going to dive in on the inside here. Is she on slick tyres? I think she's the only one, you know. Look, she's rolled the dice. This is absolute smarts from Bella Fairclough as we watch the battle between Wolfit and Warren. Chucked up behind his Finley lines, trying to get through both of them. Oh, superb from Finley lines. Three into one, it goes perfectly. And in third place, that is Bella Fairclough. Tucks up behind Barham and Shenton. Don't think she's on... Slick is she on slick tyres? No, on she's slick not. Tires. She is on wet tyres, but I tell you what, <laughs> I'll tell you this for now, for a fact, she is running super low tyre pressures. The one thing you don't want in these conditions, because most of the, there's a distinct dry line that there's enough damp around. What you don't want is higher tyre pressures because the blocks on the tread will start to wear and they'll start to move around and it'll start to slide around. So she is running very low tyre pressures, I can guarantee that. You can't get away from the fact that she's gone from 17th to 3rd in a matter of 5 oh. laps. Oh, Finley Lines! So close, the battle with Kai Clark and they've ended up tangling with each other. So this is a bit of a mess, unfortunately, now. How did that start? Lines looked for the move on the inside and the 67 turned in. Well, it's tough to know who's to blame in that one. Looks like a racing incident that they're going to have to unpick. Kai Clark is pretty clear on who he thinks. But the Bella Fairclough is going for the battle for the victory. She and she's taken the lead. Oh, my goodness. Bella Fairclough from 17th to 1st in less than six minutes. That is absolutely unbelievable. How on you earth think, has she done that? Look now. No, they're definitely wet tyres she's I mean, got on. Now Jaden Mead is coming forward. The privateer has sliced through to second place. Another great tactical decision for Jaden Mead there. He must also be running fairly low pressures as Noah Barham, third position. 
How has Bella Fairclough done that? Yeah, the interesting thing is Rocco Shenton in fourth place. Now, he's, he's, we know he's a serial front runner, a serial winner. He's in the same team as Bella Fairclough, but I'm not sure who the mechanics oh, are. Oh, Finley Lines is in trouble. Finley Lines is pitting, he's retiring. Now, has he had a black flag for that earlier incident? Not sure, but Finley's out, unfortunately. Well, further into the race, and you can see that Fairclough is not only leading, but has actually got herself a bit of a gap built up here. Now, as extraordinary. I, as, I was, as I was saying, Jake, you know, are the dads the mechanics deciding tyre pressures? Because you would think they'd both come out of the zip team, Rocco Shenton and Bella Fairclough, you'd think they'd have the same tyre pressures. However, maybe not, depending oh. on who the mechanic is. Right, Hataro Sakai's just picked up two places in one go there. He's managed to get the move there. Firstly on Rocco Shenton, I think it is, as they come through. Oh, sorry, first of all on Jarrett Clark and then on Kenzo Craigie. So now Sakai finds himself in P5. Excellent run from the Japanese talent. He's a, he's a top driver as well, Jake. He's been coming over to the UK from Japan for a few years now. This is the first time we've seen him at UKC. Hopefully we'll see him again next year. But, this is, um, this he's is obviously a quality driver. We've seen him doing pretty well in other championships. And this is the battle for fourth position. Sakai has now tried his best to get to the front of that little gaggle. Rocco Shenton is there with him, and there's a great squabble. Craigie, Griffiths, Clark, Wolfitt, Warren, and Majewski all having a terrific tussle as at the front of that little train is Kenzo Craigie. He's in P6 at the moment. Bella Fairclough is just nailing these 42-second laps. She's just disappearing out front. Look, she's four seconds clear of Jaden Mead. I think we're about to get the first woman ever to win in UKC today. Look at that, that's the championship leader there, struggling, he's in sixth place, there he is, yep. coming down under the drone. Kenzo so, Craigie. Kenzo Craigie, championship leader, not having it all his own way today, And he's going to lose sure. the place, that's Jarek Clark going to go through, Kenzo Craigie's not got a lot of response, tries to come back in on the inside, but that's a perfectly clean move from Jarek Clark, and now he's struggling to keep Charlie Wolfert and Ethan Griffiths at bay. Here comes the 40, that's Oliver Majewski, trying to get through on Kenzo Craigie as well. You say Majewski, I say Majewski, tomato, tomato, <laughs> potato, potato. He's certainly a fast driver, whichever way you look he at it. He is, no doubt about it, whatever you call him, he's quick. Four and a half seconds is the gap between Fairclough and Mead, and there goes the number 40, picking up another sensational move. Majewski, 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 however you want to go for it. A brilliant battle. And the 67, Kai Clark, has managed to get himself up into 13th place after that earlier spin. So at least he is now starting to get himself back in amongst the midfield. But he's going to run very short on time. Bella Fairclough, though. History, history is in the making here. We have been in the UKC now for three seasons, and we have yet to see a woman on the top step of the podium. We've come close a few times. We've seen how strong Olivia well, Reynolds has been Olivia from time Reynolds. to time. Oh, and bouncing off the wall, a very angry Ethan Griffiths there, absolutely fuming as he gets back on the circuit. As I said, we've come a few close a few times with Olivia Reynolds, with Katie Donaldson, and with Sophie Kinghorn. A few close calls, but this could be the first time and Bella Fairclough, I've been absolutely shouting about her all season long. She is a serious cookie in this championship. Diving through on the inside, that is the move again. And I think that's uh, another overtake, this time on Jarrett Clark. So it's going to be very tight to the end of this one. Charlie Wolfitt trying to shake off Majewski. And in the 82, Charlie Warren trying to pick up an overtake in the closing stages of this Honda Cadet Super Final at Clay Pigeon. As we watch the 47, Ryotaro Sakai desperately trying to shake off Rocco Shenton. This is the penultimate lap. Bella Fairclough, Jake, you're right. I know you've been talking Bella up to me for the last, what, 18 months or so, I think. You, you yep. mentioned her, I think, it was the first time 18 months ago. And she is delivering for you this weekend, that's well, for sure. This is the moment we are about to see a new star, a new female rock star coming through in UKC. Domination in victorious fashion from Bella Fairclough as she comes through, going into the last lap. This is an absolute hell-raising drive from Bella Fairclough as the rest of the field has no response. And we were talking about Katie Donaldson and Olivia Reynolds being in the W Series in 2032. Here's another lady who I think we're going to have three drivers out of this championship in the W Series in 2032. Scrub that. Look, she's six seconds clear of all the lads. Forget the W Series. You could probably see her in the World Endurance or IndyCar one day. Maybe even Formula One. She's doing a sensational job out of the final turn. And it's victory for Bella Fairclough. She takes it from Noah Barham and Jaden Mead. 
Sakai, Shenton, Jarrett Clark and Majewski, then Charlie Wolfett, Charlie Warren and Championship leader Kenzo Craigie. But making up 16 places, Fairclough makes UKC history. Well, they started on a track that was absolutely soaked from the rain that had fallen earlier. And now, as we see it at the end of the race, it is bone dry. Well done to all those Honda Cadet drivers there. In third place, Noah Barham. In second place, Jaden Mead. Well done to both of those drivers. But I'm really pleased and proud to say, for the first time in UKC, a female driver has put themselves on the top step of the podium. So full credit to Cart 63. Bella Fairclough. That zip car awning with Earl and Luke and all of the guys in it will be absolutely rocking tonight. Well done, Bella. Let's go and see what she had to say at the podium. Bella, history maker this weekend. First female to win in the Ultimate Karting Championship. You came close at Glanny Gorse and it all went away, but I sort of was feeling with a couple of laps to go, you, you must have known it was all over at that time. Yeah, well, Glanny Gore, was, it, was, it was a good race, but this track I really love, especially in these conditions. I started 17th, came first. Well, that's really good for me, I think. Yeah, and that's, and that's even better, isn't it? It's not, not just the case that you won, but you yeah. started 17th. To come through and win comfortably, what a fantastic result for you. Apart from your driving skills, who's responsible for this weekend? Uh, my dad and Zipcup for just helping me out, and my friend Eva for being on WhatsApp, just giving me advice. OK, well done. Your first appearance in UKC this year, so decent result for you, I guess. Yeah, it was. It was quite a tough race, but we got there in the end. And who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank Synergy, Elite Driver Management, my mechanic Graham Hill, uh, and Mike and Rob and Danny. OK, well done. We started 15th. Uh, we made our way uh, through the pack, what was really tricky. Uh, first lap helped us a lot, everyone being close together. And, um, and then we got up second and then we started to make a gap. OK, 15th to third, obviously a lot of that is down to you as the driver, but who are the people surrounding you that have helped you? Um, uh, uh, Noah Barham, uh, Bella Fairclough and Ethan Griffiths. Slightly confused by my question, I think. I was expecting him to say, oh, my mum, my dad and the team. But uh, anyway, Kenzo Craigie leads the championship, moving forward to the final round. Rocco Shenton will deliver all the pressure, though. You can absolutely guarantee it. The top ten on screen, rounded out by Ryan White. Well, that brings us to a close here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. And what a backdrop it was for some super fast, super exciting racing. Join us next time for the season finale when we'll be heading to Three Sisters Circuit in Lancashire and when we'll be officially crowning the five class champions in the Ultimate Karting Championship. But until then, from all of us here in Dorchester, see ya.